Hey folks, I'm Jack Fawcett and welcome to this shootout between two Gretsch hollow body guitars. This is the Electromatic 5420. We're going to put this back to back with a 6120-59 Nashville and hear how the Electromatic stands up to the higher end Gretsch models. Please remember to like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So the real question of the day is going to be for probably for people who are looking at Gretsch guitars and wondering, okay, I'm into Gretsch guitars, but there's quite a big price difference between the Electromatic and the higher end Gretsch models. And what are the differences and are, are they worth it to you? They're two great guitars. They each kind of cover their own ground. I think they each suit their own needs very, very well. There are some differences. There are a lot of similarities. So we're going to talk about them. We're going to start with talking about this guitar right here. This is the 5420. This is the Electromatic. This is one that many people are familiar with. It's a great, great guitar. Uh, if you haven't seen my demo, just this guitar, check that out. I think this is an excellent option for people who really want the Gretsch sound might not be into shelling out the bucks for a top end Gretsch, but still want something that's going to be an instrument you can be proud of that can hold its own. And I think this covers that territory really, really well. Now, I'm a bigger fan of the newer run Electromatics than the older run Electromatics. And, and I talk about this more in the demo, but uh, several years ago, there was a shift in the Electromatics. They kind of bumped the Electromatic up a notch uh, and there was also the Streamliner line that came out that sort of filled in the need for a more beginner to intermediate level instrument. And when I say beginner to intermediate, I'm talking about budget. So, you know, the Streamliners are great guitars. If you're an advanced player, you could certainly get a Streamliner and enjoy it and get cool Gretsch tones from it. So just understand when I talk about, you know, that sort of thing, I'm talking about the, the price point as opposed to 
they want to make guitars accessible for people who aren't necessarily shelling out top dollar. Now, this one got bumped up a little bit, and I really like it because for a while there, it was like there was the Electromatic, and then there was just this huge gap in the middle before you got up to the higher-end Japanese-made Gretches. By bumping this one up a bit, adding in the Streamliners, uh, it kind of filled that gap a little bit. Now, this is a laminate maple guitar. It has a rosewood fingerboard with the thumb inlays. It has Gretsch black top Filtertron humbuckers, kind of hearkening back to a TV Jones sort of thing. It has a pinned tunematic bridge with the Bigsby. You have a volume for each pickup, a master tone, and a master volume, and then your pickup selector switch. It has these really cool open gear tuners on the back. The headstock looks more like a classic Gretsch. That's one of the things that they changed. It used to say electromatic down the middle, and it does not anymore. This is the Fairlane Blue. This is a great guitar. This was my first Gretsch electric guitar, and this really kind of uh, changed my guitar life, so to speak, because it was my intro to Gretsch, and I've become a huge Gretsch fan and, and really enjoy playing Gretsch guitars. And the cool thing about these is they're, uh, you know, a more reasonable introduction to Gretsch. Uh, and again, kind of going back to, you know, I've traditionally been very much a Stratocaster player. I love Gibson guitars too. And I, I was always nervous about Gretsch because they are foreign. They're, you know, particularly the hollow body style. They're bigger. It feels more like you're holding an acoustic guitar. The sound is just totally different. It kind of exists off in its own world. Now, I've become a huge Gretsch fan. I might not have become a huge Gretsch fan if it weren't for one like this that came in at a lower price point that I could sort of dive in a little less committally. I got this guitar used last summer kind of decided to finally take the plunge and this was a great opportunity for me to try out Gretsch and see if they're right for me. Turns out that they were. I really like Gretsch. However, there may be people where if you get it and you, you might say, geez, this is really not for me. Well, now you've at least given it a fair shake without being a couple grand plus in the hole. There's binding around the F holes. You know, it's a double bound body. This is again, Fairlane blue finish. It's a stunning guitar. It sounds great. It's, it's really nice. What I will say with this compared to the 6120. Now I'm going to talk about the 6120 more in a minute. Is the 6120 a better guitar? Yeah. You know, it's a much higher end guitar. The craftsmanship is higher end. However, this more than holds its own this is a guitar that you can absolutely be proud to own, to play, to take out to a gig. This is a, a great guitar. So, you know, when we're talking about comparing and contrasting, of course you have to really break it down as to which features do you like better, which features, you know, what's better put together. You have to break it down that way. So I do want to be very honest with you in that sense. However, that being said, this is a great guitar. I love this guitar. I, I find this to be a great gigging guitar. I will say that the pickups actually have a kind of more of a modern breakup on this one than they do on the 6120. Overall, I'm more of a fan of the pickups on the 6120, but these do have a really, really nice kind of aggressive breakup. And again, that being said, you can also swap out pickups. You can get some Filtertrons. As a lot of people have modded these electromatic guitars to kind of give them that last little bit of oomph the rest of the way. So now we've talked about the 5420, let's talk about the 6120. So here is the 6120. This is a 6120-59 Nashville. This is a newer model that they've come out with. This is a stunning, stunning guitar. And again, you know, when we talk about it, it's like this is much more of a custom shop type instrument as opposed to a more consumer level instrument. So keep that in mind with any of this comparison. There's a big gap here that we're talking about. However, again, the 5420 is a great guitar. So keep, keep that in mind. Now this one is also maple. It has a V-shaped neck. This one has an ebony fingerboard, also has the thumb inlays. It also has the cool open gear tuners. This one has the uh, longhorn inlay in the headstock. This has TV Jones Ray Butts Full Fidelity Filtertron pickups. And it has the, uh, the tone bar bridge. It has a tortoiseshell pick guard, says Chet Atkins. Now the controls on this one are gonna be a little bit different. This one has a volume for each pickup a master volume, a pickup selector, and then this 
is a tone switch. So this particular one doesn't have a tone knob. You will see different variations of 6120s that have different controls. You'll see some that have more knobs. This one does not have a tone knob. It has the tone switch. This one also has a pinned bridge. Not all do when you're talking about the higher end Gretches know what you're getting because they they've also done there's a player's edition line versus more of like a vintage reissue line. The player's edition has some of the modern features like the pin bridge and things. So be aware of what you're getting if you're looking at a higher end Gretsch. I probably don't need to tell you that if you're looking at investing in a higher end Gretsch guitar you're probably looking at all the details. If you're not, you definitely should be. Now, this one also has higher-end electronics with the uh, with Gretsch squeeze box paper and oil capacitors. Higher level attention to detail. Uh, one of the things I noticed is the kind of, there's more of a, a floating area of the fingerboard. The joint is up here, kind of closer to the top of the guitar, whereas on the 5420, it's a little bit further down. Uh, it just feels, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of, again, kind of elegant custom shop quality instrument. There's a little bit more resonance to this guitar. I like the pickups overall better, the Ray Butts ones. Again, though, the 5420 I actually find is a little bit smoother when it comes to really pushing them with distortion. I find that with this guitar, when I'm playing it with any kind of overdrive, I need to have the tone and the gain rolled back a little further on the overdrive than I might otherwise. It gets a little bit grainy sounding. Now that's not any kind of a deal breaker. These are still beautiful pickups that have an incredible, incredible sound to them. It's again, just something to be aware of when you're looking at a guitar is, is what does it sound? The, the, I think these pickups being Ray Butts, TV Jones pickups are not particularly geared towards the modern aggressive player. It's more of a vintage style pickup, but they do have beautiful, beautiful character, you know, with the tone in the middle, which is wide open. It just has this beautiful, like glassy clarity to it. If you press it down, you kind of roll a little bit off. And then if you pull it back, it gets up into jazz territory, silky smooth in every way possible. Just a great guitar. So then the question is, where do you stand on all of this? Well, a lot of it depends on the situation you're in and your budget. The 5420 is one that I'm certainly hanging on to, even while having this guitar. And I take the 5420 out and I use it. It's a great guitar. It, again, it more than holds its own. It's a guitar that I don't have any qualms about taking out and performing with or recording with. It plays and sounds great. When it comes to recording, I use this one more. But then there are certain gigs I might not want to take this guitar out to. If there's And again, I wouldn't own this guitar in the first place if it weren't for the 5420. So I think they each have their place. They're each really, really great representations of the Gretsch tone of Gretsch's heritage. They're just loaded with mojo. The finishes are beautiful. There's a lot of attention to detail. Great guitars. So let's talk a little bit about what we're doing for this demo. For this, I'm plugging into this amp next to me, which is a Fender Super Reverb 65 reissue. When you were listening in the intro, I had a Love Pedal Gen 5 Echo on for a little bit of slap back, get kind of a classic Gretschy sound. For the overdriven tones, you're hearing a Snouse Black Box 2, which is a blues breaker style overdrive pedal. Now for the rest of the video, what I'm gonna do is do a back-to-back -back pickup comparison. We're gonna go neck, middle, bridge. I'm gonna keep the tones wide open. So I'm gonna keep this in the middle Middle, and I'm not really not going to fiddle around with the knobs much. Just want to give you kind of the straight up wide open sound. And uh, I do have the Gen 5 off for the next part. I'm going straight into the amp and using a little bit of the amp's spring reverb. It's a super reverb. How can you not play with a reverb on a super reverb? It's super. And again, for the overdriven tones, I'm going to stick with that snouse. It sounds really great. Now, the Super Reverb is a really, really bright amp, and these are bright guitars. So you will notice that I have the tone and the presence rolled back pretty far on that overdrive pedal. But I think it gets a really, really nice kind of smooth grind that way. Now, as far as Gretsch guitars go, there's a lot of different demographics of people who play Gretsch guitars. There's the classic Gretsch players, there's the modern Gretsch players, and then there's a whole bunch of people in the middle. When it comes to playing Gretsch guitars, I've heard people say everything from overdrive is sacrilege to, hey, we like everything, give us heavy distortion. 
I like using mid-level overdrives, and so that's what I'm going to give you. Now, both of these guitars are strung with Elixir 10-gauge NanoWeb strings. Set up the same, not change any of the settings on the amp, obviously giving you back-to-back. -back. Let me know what are your thoughts on this. Again, you know, I, I am going to say that this is a better guitar, but at the price point, it should be. Let's, you know, let's be real about that. It would be a detriment to the company if the Electromatic was beating the pants off of, you know, these guitars that come in much higher. But that being said, again, the Electromatic is just such a great guitar for where it's at and for what it can do. So what are your thoughts? Do you own either or both of these? Have you played either or both of them? Let us know in the comments what you think. I'm Jack Fawcett. Thanks for tuning in. Stick around for some more tones. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.
Thank you.